Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. So in this one, we're going to be taking a look at the Corsair IQ Nexus uh, that was recently released by Corsair. Uh, this is basically Corsair's version of Apple's touch bar for Windows PCs. And it's compatible with Corsair keyboards and it can be used standalone. So we'll take a look at what this is and get it installed and then we'll take a look at the software and try to answer the question, is it worth picking up? So let's get into it. So just to get out of the way, I am not sponsored by Corsair in any way. This video isn't sponsored by them. I actually picked this up with my own money because I thought that this might be a cool little gadget for my keyboard. Uh, if you think the same as well, I'll leave a couple links down below in the description for you to purchase uh, for your convenience and also help the channel as well. So if you recall a few years back when the MacBook Pro first came out with the whole touch bar and everyone was like, oh my God, this is totally useless. Uh, who would ever pay for something like this? And uh, no one would ever use it. Well, fast forward a few years and it looks like Corsair is releasing a touch bar for the Windows ecosystem. I guess we'll have to see if this is really a gimmick or if it's really any good. Um, out of the box, of course, you always have your instruction manuals and whatever. And in here, you have your different brackets, a tool, and all this stuff here. So let me try to put this aside here and let's take a look at what you get. All right, so this is the touch bar or as Corsair calls it, the command companion touch screen. And as you can see, it's not too big, not too small, just about the right size for you to slide your finger over. Uh, there is a included stand for this touch bar if you want to mount it directly into this thing, you can have it sitting on the table if you don't have a compatible keyboard. Uh, but in my opinion, the reason why you pick one of these things up is because you either have a Corsair keyboard or you already have the whole IQ Corsair suite um, and with the compatible components or whatever so that you can have the whole experience. So uh, in order to get it mounted to the keyboard here, you have three different types of brackets. And these brackets allow you to mount this touch bar to the K70, the K95. In my case, I have the K95 Platinum keyboard right here. So uh, I've got the USB socket on the left side. So that is most likely this one right here with a USB on the left. And it slots in like so, and it sits right back here. So what I'll do is uh, get you in close and we'll take a look at the installation. All right, so this is the correct bracket that we are supposed to use with this keyboard here. Uh, all you do is peel off the 3M adhesive backing. Oh, and it's in two pieces. To install this touch bar here, you have these openings which you slide the bracket right into. And then you plug this thing in. And there you go. Uh, it's pretty much installed and ready to be used. All right, so right off the bat, what I notice is the LCD screen is kind of washed out. Um, the other thing is the off angle uh, color shift is pretty excessive. Um, what this tells me is that the screen in here is a medium quality screen. It's not a very, very nice LCD. You know, it makes sense you're trying to keep costs down, right? But uh, what it also means is if you're sitting straight onto the keyboard, the LCD will look fine to you. But if you're coming in at an angle, it'll turn a little bit dark or turn a little bit 
bright depending on the angle that you're looking at. Certainly, it doesn't hold a candle to the MacBook Pro's touch bar, which is an OLED display and, and it's super fast, responsive, and really nice. But, um, you know, it works, it serves its purpose. The other thing I noticed uh, when I first installed this was the uh, Crystal LCD responds to or will deform when you click on it. Uh, if you push it pretty hard, you know, it'll kind of, you'll kind of get that wavy liquid crystal, um, you know, uh, the deformation, meaning the plastic on the touch bar is pretty thin. Uh, probably you don't want to push it extremely hard. Otherwise you might risk uh, cracking the LCD. The touch capacitive touch uh, part is, is pretty responsive. It doesn't take much force and it works relatively well. You know, I can mute, unmute, it works pretty good. Um, well, let's fire up the IQ software and see what we end up with. All right, now we're on the computer here. And the first thing I wanna do is to take a look at CPU usage. And as you can see, IQ is running in the tray here. Uh, and let's take a look at IQ software usage. Now you can see IQ is using about 1.3 to 1.4% CPU, 1.2. Um, this performance is on a 3960X 24 core processor. Uh, previously, before I installed the touch bar here, I actually ran a, took, took a look at the CPU, you, CPU usage of IQ running in the background. And I saw that the actual usage was around 0.1 to 0.2%. That means that uh, you saw basically a full 1% increase in CPU utilization. Now for me, 1% is no big deal. I've got more than enough cores. I'll probably never even feel the difference. Most likely you won't even feel the difference, but it's just important to note that there is a potential increase in CPU usage because of the IQ uh, Nexus touch bar, um, you know, whatever processing it needs to do in the background. Now let's take a look at once I fire up the actual application here, uh, where did it go? IQ, bring to foreground. So, uh, here is the IQ software and again, 1.4 to 1.5%. So 1.6%. So it, it is a little bit of an increase in performance or performance use, usage to be able to drive this, but it's not excessively bad. Now, uh, as you can see here, I currently have four different Corsair products. I've got the K95 Platinum keyboard right here. I've got Dominator Platinums in my system and I've got AX1500i. Uh, I am no longer using the Corsair headset. So uh, plus the IQ Nexus touch bar for products. Uh, I currently use all sorts of uh, actions and macros with my K95 keyboard. Love it, great keyboard. Um, and, and, and if you wanna know more about it, you can comment down in the below and I can talk about how to do macros and whatever. So I'm, at this point, I'm already assuming that you guys know how to do macros with the IQ software. Uh, here in the uh, IQ Nexus command center, software center. Uh, you, on the left side, you have buttons library. You can you know, create new buttons and we'll go into more details in, in a moment here. You have the widgets list. This is kind of showing you the stats of your system, the inputs that you have. So I have uh, CPU load, CPU temperature, package temperature. I've got the different sensors on the motherboard that I can potentially pull. And then I've got the temperature of the GPU. So uh, this is the widgets list is mainly the computer stats. And then I can import or export screens. Now, uh, as you can see here, this is the default screen that you have that comes with the Nexus. Um, and if you click on these buttons here, your uh, touch bar responds as well. So if I touch the touch bar again here, uh, this will change. Now, uh, in order, 
I can actually create a brand new screen. So this is the default screen, can't do too much there, but if I start with a brand new screen, it starts completely black. Uh, from here, what I can do is I can add, and let's see, I want to add either a button or a widget. Let's go with a button or a widget first. I can choose how big I want this widget. So I can go extra large, and then I can add a widget. And maybe the first thing I wanna know is system information. I wanna know my CPU load. So here you go. This is CPU load, as you can see, 3%. And perhaps I wanna know, um, what my CPU temperature is. I can go into here, package temperature, say, there you go, I've got my CPU load, package temperature, and basically that's what I'm seeing on the touch bar as well. From here, uh, let's see, what else? What other widgets can I add? I can add uh, AX1500i, power out, power in, power out, power in. I wanna know how much power I am consuming at the wall. So I want to know how many watts I'm pulling on my system. So right now, sitting, sitting highly, the system is pulling 270 watts. Not a very efficient system, to be honest, but it's kind of interesting to see. All right, let's take a look at buttons here. Uh, from here, I can add a new button. I can click add and I can tell, I can choose many different options to, uh, to have this button do different things. So uh, let's see, I can have it act as a macro and, and you know, you can assign macros, you can record a macro, for example, record one, two, three, stop recording, and every time I hit the button, it'll do that one, two, three macro. Um, and then you have advanced settings and then all these different things with macros. I could do text. Uh, let's see, this is copy paste. You can copy paste text in this clipboard. So it's, it's a, uh, I think it's a string of text, um, action. You can also have media playback. So play, pause, mute, volume up, volume down. Uh, I actually have an issue with my scroll wheel here. Sometimes it, the volume, it will get stuck in a max volume up or a max volume down. So it just hard locks my system. Uh, I think I'm gonna give the volume up and volume down buttons a try. So let's say volume down here. Okay. Um, wait, did, did I volume down? Save. Icon. Oops. Oh, I, okay. So here you go. I want it to be volume down. I can save it. I have display. I can change volume down. And I can change the font. I'm fine with the font the icon i don't actually want the play pause icon i want oh what the heck little cross skull cross button volume down <laughs> so when i click this button right here now uh you can see my volume is going down and uh it just shows that there's a lot of customization uh, not exactly what i was looking for to be honest but hey it works. I can use this the volume up, volume down button instead of the scroll wheel. Uh, it's a nice option to have. Uh, what else? What else other than media keys? Let's go back to application launcher. Okay, so for application launcher here, you can run a specific application. Uh, that's where you go and find your application. You can click it. You can. I can click a button on this little thing to launch World of Warcraft, for example. Why would you do that? I don't know, but you can have it that way. You can also have Chrome here. Let, let's let's just try out Chrome and call it call this Chrome. So let's keep the same icon. So I click this, Chrome launches. Pretty quick, pretty painless. Uh, I'm not sure if I really want Chrome at my fingertips like that. Maybe a text editor or a calculator. That's a little bit more useful. But you can see the customizability is pretty good. Uh, what else? Below that, there's a little timer. It looks like this is a stopwatch function or a timer function. You can click the button to uh, start a timer, I guess. And then profile switching to be able to switch the different profiles of your keyboard, of your of, of, of your settings here. Uh, it's probably pretty useful. So that's just a very, very quick look at what this system can do. Now, Corsair's website has a lot of information. It actually goes into a lot more detail of what potentially this touch bar can do. You can see some people have it configured with disabling macros, remapping keys. 
uh, icons and GIFs and all sorts of just stuff that you can customize. And I, I think that's where it gets very interesting because right now, as it stands here, the single first party, uh, you know, widgets and buttons customization, it's, it's pretty, pretty limited. It's kind of cool. You could do all these different things, but in my opinion, where it gets very interesting is if uh, you have third party integration or this interfacing with third party applications, for example, streaming, right? Rather than buying a stream deck with your buttons, you can have your changing your views of um, their different streams by just touching the little bar, touching little buttons on here. So you have one camera or your light control rather than pushing the buttons on, on the stream deck, the, 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 the Lago stream deck or whatever it's called. You can use, probably use this touch bar to do that. That's where this gets very interesting. Um, and, and as you can see here, Discord integration, Twitch streaming. So this is clearly uh, designed for that in mind, or there's limitless potential, honestly. All right, let me try to wrap it all up. Now, I think this touch part is, is a very interesting little gadget that has a lot of potential. The way it is configured right now, the default first party options are good. You know, we you have your buttons, you have your macros, but what, Corsair, I think, has in mind with this thing is to be able to expand it to have almost limitless capability and customization. Uh, you want to do something, you, you can do it. You just need to program it in and have it interface with the software. The better the integration gets with the application, the better or more useful it becomes. And what I mean, for example, the MacBook Pro, uh, when you open up the web browser or when you open up iMessage, the touch bar changes and you have different icons and you could just use it without thinking much of it. You know, it, it, it just works. If you get to the point where you can load up a game and this touch bar changes or has different you know, buttons for you to push, and you know if it gets to that point then this little thing can be pretty useful uh also that streaming uh, you know that streamer the streamer who wants to be able to change the camera views or change the applications you know rather than having one of those buttons for the stream decks you can have, use program it all in here that could be pretty useful too so uh again i think this touch bar as it is right now it's a nice little gadget to have at $100. That's pretty expensive for uh, for this little gadget. But again, uh, I'd be keen to see what the community does with the programming, the software, um, how Corsair decides to support this thing. Because again, the, the options and the potential of this thing is so good, so interesting. So uh we'll just have to keep an eye on it now if you want to know more about the options or the buttons of you know what you could potentially do sound off in the comments below and maybe i'll make another video a separate video for that on your way out guys if you can smash that like button and perhaps comment down below to see tell me if you're gonna get one of these or if you think this is completely just a gimmick uh, i want to know your thoughts as well um, and if you want to see more tech gadgets or computer videos Make sure to hit that subscribe button and look out for more videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.